had people post to our channel asking us why we're not uh, going full digital. Why are we still using analog when a Cat5 cable is all that we need? Well, there's a lot more involved with uh, running the full digital setup. Uh, unfortunately, I think that maybe most people are aware of, which is why we have not gone to digital. However, digital is a solution, but is it the only solution to do a show? Of course not. Analog is still very, very relevant in the industry. Digital solves certain problems, and analog can easily solve other problems. All right, so is this cable going to be enough to do digital? Let's take a look. Okay, so what's actually involved in doing a full digital setup? Some people seem to think that it is just a simple Cat5 cable, but that is not the case. Okay, a digital snake is not a single Cat5, Cat6 network cable. So if somebody tells you, hey, all you need is this network cable, that is nowhere near all the equipment that you're going to need to do a full digital setup. So is this what is really needed to do digital? A Cat5 cable, pardon me, maybe Cat5e, Cat6 cable? So to start off with, if you are using this type of cable to attach to your digital console, this is not the best cable for you because it can easily be broken. Think about it. You've got a whole sound system sitting out there, all this digital equipment, everything, and you are going to rely upon that little end of the cable that probably cost 0.0005 cents US dollars to manufacture. I don't think you want to put your entire show on that one little end. So what you're actually going to need is this type of cable. This is an EtherCon, and they're sometimes called tactical cables. And if you notice, notice the barrel end on it. It matches like what an XLR cable would use for connecting into the console. That barrel secures the connection and protects it into your console. So that one cable that you thought you were going to use, you're not going to be able to use that to the jack. And if you notice on this Ethernet that there is a round area around where the RJ45 connects into, that's where the barrel connects into. Here's a better picture of what the end should look like on the uh, tactical cables. Okay, so what's actually involved? Well, if you are a band, you're probably not going to need a lot of digital equipment. You have your digital console, I mean, if you have one, you're going to need a cable and you're going to need some stage boxes. But if you are a sound provider, it is a much different story in what you're going to need and how much it's actually going to cost. Okay, let's start out with a uh, basic stage setup. Stage is out there, the console set up in the proper location. Okay, and alongside the console, we have our outboard gear. Now, in this particular setup, we're going to be looking at this from a uh, analog perspective first, and then we'll look at it uh, from the digital view. Okay, and then we have our analog snake set up, and that's about it. We've got a stage box sitting up there at stage right. We've got our composite cable running back to the console, all the inputs. We've got outputs from there, and we have our outboard in the, uh, in the setup as well. Because we have the outboard, we are running a crossover, and we may also be running a cardioid sub setup. Okay, and here we are doing the same thing on one of our Personas boards. Okay, as you can tell, it's a basic setup. It doesn't take very long to do. It was just a part of, of what we do to set up a sound system. So what we're going to do is we're going to get rid of the outboard, 
because in a full digital setup, technically you don't need any outboard. And we've got our Cat5, Cat6, or even a Cat7 cable sitting here. Now, I think a lot of people believe that this is all that's needed. Now, if you'll notice, in the drawing, the Cat cable is connected in the console. But where does it terminate at the stage? And this is where I think a lot of people don't understand that if you've got the cable connected on one end, it needs to be connected on another end. Okay, so our CAT cable actually needs to terminate at a stage box. And this stage box is one that is design designed for digital use. Okay, as I said before, if you're a band, you may not need a lot of the stuff that we're going to go over. But if you are a sound provider, you're probably going to need a lot of what is discussed here. Okay, so here we have the stage box. Now for a 32 channel board, we had one stage box set up there, which handles 16 inputs. But actually what we need are two stage boxes at the stage. That's to handle the full 32 in case we need it. But we actually need another stage box because the stage boxes that we are installing, like a lot of digital gear, these things require electricity. And as such, these are miniature computers that are running these stage boxes. So we're going to have to have a third stage box. Not that we need it, but we need something as a backup. You never know when something's going to happen. Okay, now we've got a single cable run between the stage and the console. So we're going to have to add another cable to this as a backup. Okay, so now I've got a total of three stage boxes at the stage. Two of them will be active at any given time. So the third one is a backup, but it still needs to be connected to power, but it doesn't need to be powered on. So what we're gonna to have to do, because these are computers up there, is we would add a UPS to the whole environment up there to ensure that the stage boxes, in case of a power blip, they don't go down. Okay, so all the power that we need for the stage boxes now connects into the UPS. Don't forget, what I'm talking about is what we would be needing to do as a service provider. If you are a band, you may not need all of this equipment. Okay, there is something that we are going to have to have because we do not want to uh, daisy chain too many devices together because that's just going to add more latency. So what we're going to have to do is connect a AVB switch into the um, whole setup at the stage. So our network cable is going to connect into the AVB switch and then the stage boxes are going to connect into the switch as well. Now the AVB switches, those are small computers as well. So guess what? That is a single point of failure for a show. So we're going to have to get another AVB switch as a backup. Okay, so we can't really have all of this stuff just sort of sitting around on the stage or sitting on the ground. So what we're going to have to do is get a rack to install all of this equipment into. The um, stage boxes that Personas has can be rack mounted or they got these handles on them where they can sit on the stage. Said so if you're a band, it may be okay if they're sitting on the stage, but as a service provider, you need to keep the stage as clear as possible. Okay, for a large show, we run crossovers. And if it's an even larger show, we may be running a cardioid sub or we could potentially be running some delay speakers. So we need to have a way to control all that stuff. So we're going to get one of our racks that has the our DBX260 in it and we need to have it with us at front of house. Okay, but uh, wait just a moment here. Can a crossover be used with a digital snake? It cannot. Now, it can in certain situations, but if you need to run a crossover at front of house with a digital snake, a digital setup, that will not work. We have no way to send back a crossover signal through the snake back to the stage. So what we're going to have to end up doing is moving that outboard gear, the front of house outboard gear, up to the stage with the other rack of equipment. And then the crossover sitting at the stage, we have to interface that with the outputs from the digital snakes. 
pardon me, the uh, digital stage boxes. So we would run those outputs into the crossover. Now this may work fine for a smaller show, but if, if you have a large show to do, running a crossover or having a crossover at the stage will not work. And here's why it won't work. We can't tune the crossover at the stage when we're at front of house. What if we do have a cardioid setup? That requires some tuning with a milliseconds uh, with the sub or delay speakers. We need to set delays. We can't do that at the stage. And if you're running compression and limiting within your drive rack unit, you can't make adjustments with the unit at the stage. So how do we get the signal from the drive rack unit back to the stage? Well, they make these units, they will convert XLR to RJ45. And on the other end, it converts the RJ45 back to an XLR connection. Okay, so we're gonna need one of those. On the digital board, to be able to utilize a crossover at front of house, we're going to have to set up our digital board to send the main left and right outputs out of the analog outputs of the board and not out the digital output. Because we're going to have to get that full range signal out of the console and into the crossover. And then once it's in the crossover, then we can send it out that converter box that converts the signal from XLR to RJ45. And as I mentioned earlier, we're going to have to have another converter box sitting at the stage to convert the RJ45 back to XLR so that we can send those signals out to a front of house. Now for the monitor signals, we're not too worried about those because we can use the digital snake to send those back. Okay, so to get those signals out of the converter box, guess what? We're going to have to get another RJ45 cable. Connect it to the box, run it parallel with the other network cable, and we're going to have it terminate at the receiving end where it converts the RJ45 to uh, XLR. Ah, uh, but you know what? We may have a cardioid sub set up. Or we could be running something else. Um, you know, we could be running delays. So we're going to have to get a uh, another set of those converters. So we're going to have to have two boxes at front of house, two boxes at the stage to do the conversion. Uh, and guess what? We're going to need another RJ45 cable. Okay, so now we're up to three network cables running from front of house to the stage plus one spare. Okay, we're going to need these XLR connections to handle our ClearCom, ProCom communication headsets. Those headsets work off of XLR connections. So we're going to have to utilize another one of those channels on those XLR converter boxes to send the signal from front of house uh, to the stage. All right, so I think we've got most of the things covered that we need for a digital solution. Okay, as you can tell, there is a lot of equipment here. And as a sound provider, this is what you would be looking at to run a show. Now, if you're a band, said this, a lot of this stuff may not matter to you. You may not need two 16, pardon me, three uh, 16 input stage boxes. Maybe you can get by with uh, just one. All of this equipment is what would be needed to replace what we currently use, which is this. So how much does all this cost? The snake that we're using is a 32 by 8, 150 feet, and it probably costs us only $800. And the best part about this, and I can't stress this enough, is no electricity is required. Smaller events may not require all that, what you see on the screen for a digital solution. 
uh, but uh, for larger events and sound providers, this is probably what it would take to do it. So as of January this year, some quick calculations came up to a little over 6,000 US dollars to do a full digital implementation, including all the backups that I mentioned. It could be a really big drawback with digital, and that has to do with the latency that is found in most all digital gear. There's latency that occurs between the analog and digital converters. There's latency that occurs within the digital consoles. And there is latency that occurs again as the signal leaves the digital world and goes back into the analog world. The biggest problem with the latency is actually for the in-ear monitors. Latency really would never be a problem for front of house, for the front of house sound simply because when the guests are out there listening to the music, there's already a built-in latency due to the speed of sound. So the front of house sound, latency is irrelevant. The biggest problem with latency is with the in-ear monitors. When they have their in-ear monitors and they can hear themselves, they can hear themselves singing and just from the ambient loudness of their voice within you know the cavity of their head they can hear themselves and what happens is that even if it's a few milliseconds of delay when it, that's when their singing comes back to them through the in-ear monitors that few milliseconds of delay can cause their own timing issues when they're listening trying to listen to themselves However, some performers may feel that it's okay. It's not going to bother them. Okay, so what about latency with analog setup with an analog snake? Well, actually, the signal travels nearly the speed of light through an entire analog setup. There is virtually no delay from when somebody sings in a microphone on the stage. It goes to the console it can go through a gate, a compressor, and it can go through other effects. And it's sent back to the stage, either through an inner monitor or a stage monitor. It is nearly instantaneous. I hope this sheds some light on the differences between digital and analog. And uh, hopefully it made you think a little bit uh, about what is needed to actually implement a digital solution. And like at the beginning of this video, when everybody talks about how easy it is to implement a digital solution and then they talk about a single Cat5 cable, that is simply not the truth. Stage Left Audio is not anti-digital. We believe digital is a solution, but it needs to be a solution to fix a problem. All right, so is this cable going to be enough to do digital? Thanks for watching.